Hi, my name is Maarten van der Velde. This is a pre-recorded presentation for the 2021 International Conference on Cognitive Modeling. In this presentation, I will show how we can use the linear ballistic accumulator to estimate ACT-R memory parameters from response data, helping us to capture behavioral dynamics and individual differences in our cognitive models. This work was done together with Florian Sense, Jelmer Borst, and Frederik van Rijn. I'll start by giving a quick summary of the main idea. Usually, when we observe how people behave, we find that their behavior is not constant, but that it changes over time and differs between individuals. The challenge that cognitive modelers face is how to capture such behavioral dynamics in the parameters of their cognitive models. In this study, we show how we can infer individualized parameters of an XR model of memory retrieval using a mathematical model, namely the linear ballistic accumulator. First, through a simulation study, we demonstrate that the LBA can recover the original XR parameters from response data. And then, as a proof of concept, we fit the LBA to a real empirical data set, showing how it can offer insight into the mechanisms that underlie changes in behavior. Here's an overview of what I'll be talking about, so feel free to skip ahead using the timestamps on the screen. Now, we know that behavior is in constant flux. As time goes on, we learn, we forget, we become tired and impatient, our goals and desires change, and we let our minds wander. All of this can affect how we perform on a cognitive task. And of course, there's also variability between individuals. Now, very often, there is clear explanatory power in being able to capture such changes in a formal cognitive model which can help us understand where this behavioral variability comes from and can help us make individually tailored predictions, recommendations or assessments. But a challenge that modelers often face when constructing a model within a cognitive architecture like XR is how can we accurately capture this behavioral variability in the parameters of our model? Now, a fairly common approach is to simply try a whole bunch of different parameter values and then see which of them gives the best fitting model. This is often referred to as a parameter sweep or a grid search. And this approach can work quite well, but it can also require quite a lot of computing power and it can be difficult to interpret the parameter estimates that you end up with. The estimates, they are often based on aggregated data and the uncertainty of the estimates is not captured. And both of this can limit how generalizable the resulting model actually is. So perhaps a more productive approach is to borrow methods from mathematical psychology, which are typically much better suited for finding specific parameter values and quantifying their uncertainty. Unlike cognitive architectures, which lack a formal statistical framework, mathematical models can usually be, be expressed in closed form likelihood equations that lend themselves to parameter estimation and statistical inference. These models can be fit more efficiently and they can also be integrated into a Bayesian framework. In this work, we take the idea of integrating formal modeling approaches and show a mapping of the parameters of ACT-R's declarative memory system, which is a cognitive architecture approach, onto parameters of the linear ballistic accumulator, a mathematical modeling approach. The LBA gives us the tools to fit a whole distribution of response times at once, rather than, for example, only an average response time per condition, as would typically be the case if we try to fit an ACT-R model. And its link to ACT-R means that we can explain observed behavioral changes in terms of ACT-R parameters, which already have cognitively meaningful interpretations within the wider context of the architecture. So here's what that looks like. Let's say we're modeling a queue retrieval task in which you see a queue, retrieve a corresponding chunk from memory, and then respond with a button press. We can model this process using the linear ballistic accumulator. The LBA assumes that evidence for a memory chunk accumulates at a constant rate until it reaches a certain boundary, at which point the retrieval is done. Here you can see a visualization of this process over a set of multiple trials with two memory chunks, blue and red, each with, with their own accumulator. There is trial to trial variability in the starting point and the drift rate, but on average, the expected finishing time of an accumulator is simply the vertical distance between the starting point and the boundary divided by the drift rate. And there's an additional term, T0, 
that captures the time needed to encode the queue and then to execute the button press. Now in Act R, we can write a similar equation for the time that it takes to retrieve a chunk from memory. Here, it depends on the activation of the chunk. So the higher the activation, the faster it is to retrieve. AXR also includes a so-called latency factor, the parameter f, which scales this retrieval time. And like in the LBA, we include a component that represents the time spent encoding the queue and then executing the response. We can rewrite this equation like this, and uh, that means that it has a similar form to that of the LBA. And now you'll see that we can identify a mapping between AXR's parameters and those of the LBA where the latency factor f is linked to the distance between the starting point and the threshold, and the activation is linked to the drift rate. Now notice that this mapping also gives a more intuitive meaning to the latency factor. It's essentially a measure of response caution, as a higher latency factor means that more vertical, di vertical distance has to be covered before a retrieval is finished. Now, let me just pause for a bit to say that the idea of linking Actar's memory system to some form of accumulator model is, of course, not new. There have been various versions of this idea over the years, some of which I've listed here. And the work that I'm presenting now can best be seen as an extension of a previous mapping between Actar and the log normal race model, uh, which was first described by Nissen, Boyman, and Vasish in their 2018 paper. And if we compare to the LNR, the LBA allows us to fit one additional parameter, namely this latency factor f. Now, just to show you that the two models are in fact identical, here I'm showing a comparison of a response time distribution generated by ACT-R and one generated by the equivalent LBA. And note that the error responses are shown as negative RTs here. And in case you're not convinced by the previous slide, we've also made an interactive Shiny app where you can play around with, it, with the parameters yourself. So check that out. Now, given the mapping between the parameters of ACT-R and those of the LBA, it should be possible to recover ACT-R memory parameters from response data using existing methods for fitting the LBA. So we performed a parameter recovery simulation with two questions in mind. Firstly, can the LBA indeed recover ACT-R memory parameters from a typical participant sample who completes a reasonable number of trials? And then secondly, does the parameter recovery work regardless of specific parameter values? So we use ACT-R to simulate response data from 25 model participants who performed a sequence of 100 retrieval trials. We modeled the retrieval as a competition between two chunks representing a correct and an incorrect response to a given retrieval queue. Each model participant had a unique combination of memory parameter values, which were sampled at random, which you see here. We then ran the models for 100 trials each, and we recorded the answer and response time in each trial. Then with that data, we fitted the LBA to each set of responses, which gave us a single set of LBA parameter values for each model participant that we could then transform back to act our parameters using the mapping that I showed you earlier. This figure compares the original act our parameters to the parameters recovered by the LBA. And as you can see, the model is already pretty good at recovering the original values, even though there are only 100 trials per participant. Uh, now, to demonstrate how we can also use this method in practice, we fitted the LBA to a real empirical data set as well. We used the data from a multi-session retrieval practice task, which was completed by recruits of the Dutch Commando Corps. The participants learned the names of fictitious safe houses on three different maps, and they were spread over three different learning sessions over the course of a week. And each of these learning sessions consisted of a series of retrieval practice trials in which one safe house location would light up on the map, and the participant had to recall its name and select the corresponding answer on the screen. The trials in these learning sessions were scheduled using an adaptive algorithm, which tries to repeat items whenever their activation hits a certain value. And in between the second and the third learning session, the participants also completed a high intensity loaded speed march. Now, Aside from individual differences between participants, we expected individuals' performance on the retrieval task to change in two ways. 
So firstly, we expected that performance would improve after the first session as participants became more familiar with the task. And secondly, we also expected that the physical exertion of the speed march would affect performance in the third session. This figure shows you the accuracy and response times in each, each session. And as expected, the response accuracy increased from the first to the second session and responses became faster too. We did not see a change in accuracy in session three, so the one after the speed march, but we did see a further drop in response times there. So we fitted the LBA separately to each of the three learning sessions for every participant. And here you can see what that looked like for four of the participants. And you can see that the LBA did a reasonable job to capture the response time distributions. But in some cases, the very high accuracy and the relatively low number of trials did make it quite challenging to fit the error response as well. And uh, this figure shows the ACTAR memory parameters that we inferred from the data using the LBA. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of variation in the individual estimates but they are clustered quite neatly around the sample averages, and they appear to also have reasonable values that remain quite stable uh, from session to session. Now, in principle, we could now link the observed changes in behavior to changes in these ACTAR memory parameters. So we fitted a set of linear mixed effects models to the parameters that suggested that there was an increase in the activation of the correct answer. So that's mu c from session one to session two, while the activation of the incorrect answer, mu f, stayed the same, corresponding to a higher average probability of retrieving the correct answer overall. Uh, in addition to this, we also found a decrease in the non-retrieval time from session two to session three, three. And this may reflect faster stimulus encoding or response execution than before. Now, I should point out here uh, that because of the relatively low number of trials and the high response accuracy, these estimates do differ slightly between runs of the LBA. So we should interpret these findings with a degree of caution. Nevertheless, I think they do demonstrate that it's possible to infer ACTAR parameters from response data using the LBA. Uh, and this gives us a potential explanation in terms of the mechanisms of the ACTAR architecture for the changes that we see uh, in observed performance. So to conclude, there is a mapping between the parameters of the LBA and the declarative memory parameters of ACTAR, and we can use this mapping to infer individualized ACTAR parameter estimates from response data. What's nice is that we can infer these parameters from an entire response time distribution rather than just averages, and we don't need to resort to computationally expensive grid search methods to find them. It's also nice that these parameters already have a meaningful interpretation within the wider context of the architecture, which means that, for example, we can use them to make individually tailored recommendations or assessments uh, or even predictions of behavior on related cognitive tasks. Lastly, this mapping gives the ACTAR latency factor F a more concrete meaning. So in terms of the LBA, it simply captures how much evidence is needed to commit to a response, which means that we can think of it as a measure of response caution in ACTAR as well. Now, an important limitation of the method I've described here is that it assumes that the activation of memory chunks is relatively constant since the model assumes that all retrievals of a particular chunk come from the same underlying distribution. And this assumption is most likely to be met either when the knowledge is so ingrained that there is essentially no decay over the span of a task. Uh, this is the case with linguistic knowledge, for example, or when the retrieval attempts are timed such that the activation is always roughly the same, as was the case in our empirical example. Uh, another challenge that we faced here is that it's quite difficult to fit the LBA when you have a low number of responses or when the response accuracy is very high. Uh, the most obvious solution may simply be to collect more data or to make the task more difficult, but let's assume that that's not possible. Then it might help to constrain the parameter space more strongly. And we might do this, for example, by using a Bayesian hierarchical model to fit the LBA. So that is how we can estimate ACTAR memory parameters using the linear ballistic accumulator. Now, if you're interested in more details about this work, uh, please read our paper and also reach out if you have any comments or questions. Thank you for listening.